What is up, Bertini fam? Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the pros and cons of owning a turboed bike. Now, do me a big favor. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel now. This way you can stay up to date on all of my future content that I'm putting out. With that being said, go ahead and roll the intro. The first pro is dollar per dollar. It is by far the best modification that you can make to your Harley Davidson. Now, the reason for that is, if you are getting equivalent high-end parts for your bike, right? If you think about it, building your motor, you add a 131 to your bike or a 124, any big motor kit, right? You're at least in four to $5,000, right? You still need an exhaust. Now, a lot of people, go with let's say a thousand dollar exhaust or a fourteen hundred dollar exhaust right some people are going for two thousand dollar exhaust and I'm, I'm avoid naming some brand names here but uh there's some pretty expensive exhausts out there oh let me say what's up to the scooter guy oh no that was a motorcycle never mind sorry guy if you watch my channel i didn't mean to call you a scooter guy so when you think about it when you start adding in the tuner and and the exhaust and the big motor kit and the air intake and everything else that comes in the big motor kit you're easily in, like I was, about $7,000, right? Especially if you go to a nice shop, you're gonna be in about, I wanna say about that 6,500 mark at the low end um, to about seven grand. Now, in terms of power, power is gonna get you to roughly that 130 to 140 mark. If you're really, really, really lucky, you'll get to that 150 mark, right? Well, to put that into perspective, if you took a Milwaukee 8 with a 114 in it and you slap on a Trask Performance Turbo Kit, right, their Stage 1 Turbo Kit, you're in about the same amount of money roughly. So you're in about $6,000, let's just say. But you're making like 170 plus, 180 plus horsepower, right, with that same amount of money invested. Oh, I just realized I need to go and get gas. If you don't know, you only get gas at Shell's because they got a, uh, a fuel additive or cleaner that actually works. There's been studies that show that Shell gas is actually the best gas. So let's go ahead and get on in here and fill it up. Ninety-three only. By the way, I'm gonna make a separate video on the gas mileage that you get when having a turbo bike. And to give you a little bit of a sneak peek and a spoiler, you definitely do save in gas mileage in comparison to having just a big motorbike or having a big motorbike in general. From my experience so far, you do spend less gas with a turbo bike. Obviously, assuming you're not going in a boost every two seconds, but so far I've actually been seeing better gas mileage than I was getting before when having just the big motor. I don't know how, I can't explain it, but it is what it is. And for those of you wondering, it costs me $24.16 to fill up my bike. That is at pretty much completely empty. And let's just say at bone empty, it's 25 bucks, but that's with current gas prices, which are at almost $5 for 93. By the way, tell me that doesn't look nice, right? Look at that, that just looks so beautiful. The looks on this thing, it just completely transforms the bike in terms of the, I wanna say sex appeal, but obviously everybody always comes up to you, asks you about it, wants to know why the hell your bike sounds like that, so that's pretty cool too. Listen to the sound of that turbo. It sounds so pretty, it's so nice, it's so nice. Oh, look, fellow rider, Triumph, the Bonnie. <laughs> Every single time this bike puts a Kool-Aid smile on my face now. Holy shit, that turbo. Whoo, man, I get chills. I don't know if you can see my arm. I literally get chills every fucking time I push this bike. Anyway, so getting back to what I was saying, dollar per dollar, turbos are by far the best way to go in my opinion. You're not gonna see anywhere close to the power numbers you would get. In fact, most people, when they ask me about the turbo bike, and, and like we're talking about like what exhaust, what I think is the best exhaust, what I think is the best tuner, what I think is the best intake, like what I think is the best cam, all these different things, right? I'm lately, after having my turbo, I'm constantly telling people, 
if you really, really, if horsepower, torque is your goal, if power is your goal, you cannot beat getting a turbo. There's no dollar per dollar better scenario than getting a turbo. And not only that, the rideability function, it's just beyond it, beyond the motor build that is. Now, in terms of my next pro, so the next pro is actually semi-pro, semi-con, but it just depends on how you look at it. So I hear a lot in the community, oh, turbos produce more heat. That is not necessarily accurate. It is not adding more heat to your motor. Because it has more piping and because things are external, right, you're gonna feel more ambient heat, but it is not adding more heat to your motorcycle. Now, people have been asking me lately, do I feel like it's so hot, so ridiculously hot? I do not. Is the piping closer to my leg? It is. But to me, the way that I ride, and I'll show you here my footing in a second here. Let me clear this, this turn. This is how my leg positioning, I'm not sure how clear it could come across in video, but that's how my leg is positioned on my bike. And I actually leave it like this, really. Woo, I'm over here like showing you guys and I'm about to go off road. This ain't no off-road bike. This is not the Pan America. Look at these houses, beautiful houses. Guy has two freaking ski nautiques. Really? What do you do for a living, guy? Sell drugs? Watch him be like some, or her be some like real estate developer or something like that, or a broker or owning their own firm or something. But anyways, that's how I typically ride the bike is like that. Now, if I'm in traffic, right? Does it add a bunch of more heat to my leg? Personally, do I feel it? No, I personally do not feel the difference. When I feel the difference personally, like I said, this is gonna be dependent on the user slash operator, is when I'm pushing the bike. That is when I notice the difference in heat by my leg. That is the biggest time that I notice the heat by my leg. With that being said, that is very exhaust dependent. For those of you who don't know, and I'm sure you just saw at the gas station, I run a custom, very, very, very short exhaust that I had Trask custom make me for my bike, right? If you do not get the same exhaust that I get and you get one that's further back, there's a high probability that you are not going to feel the same heat that I'm feeling on my leg when I push my bike. Now, I do have some turbo cooling uh, mods that are coming in the future that I'm not gonna disclose yet. I partnered up with some brands uh, for some products that they're gonna be sending me. Um, nothing too crazy, it doesn't actually cool the turbine itself. Um, it just cools around your leg area and we're gonna do some experiments with that to see if it actually works or if it doesn't work. So the whole heat myth, that is really user, you know, operator kind of thing. I can't really say if for you it's gonna be uncomfortable or not. For me, does it produce any more heat? It moves the heat to a different position, but does it produce more? No, it does not produce more heat for me. I'm perfectly fine. I ride this bike very comfortably with no issues at all in terms of being uncomfortable with heat. Pro number three, especially for you twin cam people out there. Pro number three is going to be you cannot make, or you can, but it is very difficult to make the same power that you can make with a turbo on your twin cam. And actually, technically it goes the same for an M8. M8s do make more power than twin cams easier, but it takes building your motor out to being a borderline, not daily, not rideable motorcycle when you have a completely tricked out motor, right? Built heads, built bottom end, you know, big board kit, every, the, the works, right? When you have a fully built setup, it does take away from your daily driving experience. Can you daily it? Yes, I dailyed this ridiculous bike before it had a turbo on it with just the big motor stuff built, everything, right? I dailyed it. So is it doable? It is doable. But the question is, is, is it more comfortable just having the turbo? By far, I cannot even imagine how much more comfortable this would be if I just had the turbo kit and not the whole big bore with the turbo kit, right? So if you are a horsepower junkie and you're looking to get those crazy, crazy, ridiculous numbers, right? You want the 160, 170, 180. Now you're getting into the 190 and above 200 horsepower mark. 
it's almost like your only option is a turbo kit. And for most of you, you don't realize this, but most of you would actually enjoy the turbo kit much more than you would anyways of a built motor, just because of the way that a turbo propels you forward when you get on it. It's a different feeling and it's very difficult to ex explain. Think of like a rubber band, it's the same thing. It's like you go from like this very normalness, right? Very chill normalness to all of a sudden just being slingshotted forward and it feels so freaking good, so exhilarating. All right, so on to my next point. My next point is the sounds of a turbo bike. This thing, I don't know if you can hear, but this thing sounds amazing. That whistle, that turbo whistle. Oh my God, I can't, I can't. It's just like the sounds, well one, you guys can't see it right now, but I have a cool smile ear to ear. It is very difficult to push my bike without having a smile every single time I get on the throttle. It is just like ear to ear every fucking time without a doubt. It's like, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's hard not to do it with the feeling that the turbo bike actually just gives you that slingshottiness, the feeling, the sounds, the smells, it just, it's amazing. But yeah, so getting back to the sounds, I don't know if you can hear, but that turbo whine, that turbo whistle is just so good sounding. And then even from like the outside, like it literally grabs everybody's attention. Everybody wants to know what the hell is on your bike and why in the world does your motorcycle sound like a jet plane? freaking flying boy i'm like batman up in this bitch anyways the sounds like i was saying the sounds are just amazing it makes this bike an absolute showstopper everywhere i go everybody wants to know what is going on in this bike why does it sound like that and then too even at stoplights like people look and they're like oh that looks so cool and people always reference it looks like a jet like the bike looks and sounds like a jet like Something about it just looks really, really mean, really, really fast. And so for me, that is a big pro because look, we get our bikes and I know some people are like, I don't care what people think of my bike. You know, I don't care if they think it looks cool. It just matters if I think it looks cool. Listen, let's be real. I'm a very, and I'm sure for many of you who've been watching my channel for quite some time now, you already know this, but I am a very, I don't want to say ego list person because we all got some sort of ego, but I don't really, feed into that whole ego thing, right? I wear pink, I like doing certain things that dudes are like, oh, that's not manly. So I don't feed into that whole thing, but I still do care. It still is nice, is what I should say. When people are like, oh, that's a nice bike. Your bike looks so cool, it sounds so cool, right? It is a, it's a good feeling, right? And so for me, that is a pro, and it is something that like, when you're at a gas station, when kids want you to rev your motorcycle up, like, that's cool to me. And I'm sure for many of you, it is probably cool to you too when people give your motorcycle attention and they're like, oh, that's so cool. It sounds so cool. It looks so cool. Like, it's a nice feeling. And so for me, that is a pro as well. Now, I am going to be doing a separate video on gas mileage at a later date, but gas mileage for me is a pro. I have noticed an increase in better gas mileage. I can't even begin to imagine for those of you who don't have the big motor that I got, right? And you guys just have, a, a, or not just, because 114 is still pretty ridiculous, but you guys that have a 107, right? I can't even begin to imagine how much better gas you're probably going to get from your bike by just having the turbo on it. At least, like I said, for me, that has been my experience is that I've been getting better gas mileage with having the turbo on my bike versus just having the 131 built motor on my bike. All right, so now let's talk cons. So what are the cons of having a turbo kit? So some of these might be cons to you, some of them might be pros to you, but it is what it is. I still wanna to mention to you what I could see as for some people being the cons. So first con is the sound. To some of you, you might not like the sound of a jet. You might not, not like the sound of that whistle you might not care for that kind of attention and you just like the sound 
that Harley Motors make, that the M8s make, that the twin cams make. Hey, and that's valid, that's true. You know, in that case, you're not gonna like the turbo. Oh my God, look at that view. Oh, I love my city. So sounds for you might be a thing where you're like, look, I don't like that sound, and so I don't really care for it. And that's valid, look, that's user preference. And so it's up to the operator really if you care for the sounds of the turbo or not. Me personally, I'm absolutely obsessed with the sounds my bike now makes having the turbo. And so it's really just dependent on you if you like the sounds or not. Like I said, it could be a pro or a con. The other thing is the looks. Some people do not like the looks that the turbo has. And I know some of you might be like, what the hell? Who isn't gonna like the look of the turbo? I get that actually all the time when I tell people what the cons are. They're like, what? No, that's ridiculous. That's like a dumbass con. But it is a con because we don't all like the same look of things. And for some people, they might like the look of just the all motor look. And so I understand that completely. And so to those people, the turbo isn't gonna be for you if it is, you know, just a looks thing because you like what you like and you like the looks of what you like the looks of. And that is a completely valid point. Oh my gosh, I gotta show you how this bike pushes. It is just amazing. Watch this. This is, I'm in second gear right now, okay? That way, I don't even know how fast that was when you guys can time it, but that wasn't and you can replay the video I didn't even wide open throttle this bike and that was just that fast By the way, if you do wide open throttle this bike with a 131 and a stage 2 turbo kit You get no traction. Oh, by the way, and traction control was on it is just freaking ridiculous It makes no freaking sense. It's just so damn fast and then of course cars want to pull up to you to see what the hell you got going on that makes your bike go that freaking fast it's ridiculous it really is all right so now let's talk about the next con so the next con once again this is could be a pro or it could be a con depending on the way that you look at it but for some people it might be a con and that is the cost of a turbo kit now stage one turbo kits like i said they are cost effective when you think about it dollar per dollar what you're getting in terms of the power for versus what you're spending you are actually in a good spot because you're in that six thousand dollar mark so stage one turbo kits do make a lot of sense now if you have anything bigger than a 114 you are going to need a stage two turbo kit from trask now stage two turbo kits on the other hand those are around $10,000. So the kit that I purchased on my bike, the way that I have it exactly, will run you roughly around eleven dollars to $12,000. But I got every bell and whistle that you can possibly get from Trask, for my turbo kit, that is. So getting a stage two turbo kit can be pricey if that is the route that you have to go. So for those of you big motor guys out there or big motor gals out there, and you are above a 114, you will need a stage two turbo kit. So you're gonna be looking at spending around 10 grand. But let me tell you something, that 10 grand gets you smiles. Every single time, Kool-Aid smile, baby. It is hard to explain, man. It's like once you've driven a turbo bike, you never wanna drive a naturally aspirated one. And it's no offense to any of my friends. Look, obviously many of you already know, I got a lot of friends in the industry who are also YouTubers and influencers and I've ridden their bikes. It is just different. Riding a turbo bike, it is a different kind of feeling. And it is one of those feelings that is indescribable and it just gives you a Kool-Aid smile from ear to ear. I don't care what kind of badass, hardcore, tier one special forces operator you are and hardcore shit that you've been through in life. You jump on a turbo bike, you will have a goddamn smile from ear to fucking ear. That's just how it goes. Why? Because Stone Cold says so. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. So for those of you with the big motors, you are gonna need a stage two turbo kit from Trask, which is gonna cost you around that 10 grand mark. And if you wanna do the full blown bells and whistles customizing that I did, it's gonna run you close to another one to two grand like mine did. But like I said, it is worth every penny. I don't regret any bit of it. 
I wish I would have turboed this bike much sooner. Obviously, as you know, I'm a content creator for YouTube, and so it is a process, right? It is something that we just go with the motions, and I do things to show you guys different options that you can get. And by the way, by guys, of course, I mean guys and gals. I know we have a lot of female riders in the Harley community, in the motorcycle community, and of course, we love you guys. It's awesome. Every single time I see a female rider, it's like, it just makes me happy to see like women empowering themselves on motorcycles and getting the kind of freedom that we get as dudes riding these things. So it is always cool to see female riders. Now, those are really all the pros and cons that I have. The only last con I would say, and it's kind of like a silly one. I don't even, I didn't even want to mention it to be honest but it's something to note. And the reason why is because I'm sure in the comment section down below, I get chewed up if people really were like, Michael, that is not a con, stop it, you're being an idiot. But I'm gonna mention it anyways. The last con is if you don't like going fast, a turbo ain't for yo ass. Turbos make you wanna go quickly all the time. It's like you just feel that need for speed. And so it is hard to resist twisting that right hand. Like I said, is it a con? Not really, but maybe for some of you it might be considered a con. Having a bike that is just really, really fast might not be your thing. And in that case, don't spend the money on a turbo, don't spend the money on any mods, and just keep your goddamn bike factory, stock, OEM. Don't touch that bit. But none of us do that, because that's boring. Listen to that turbo, baby. Oh, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. I just like shifting my bike. I don't even care if it's at high RPMs. I just like shifting it. It sounds so damn good. All right, hold on. Let's get some turbo sounds in here for you guys. Let's get you some turbo. Oh my god, it makes no fucking sense. The bike is so goddamn fast. And by the way, guys, once again, you can replay back the video. I'm nowhere near wide open throttle, like not even in the ballpark of it. Anyways, let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions about turbocharging your motorcycles. It doesn't matter if it is a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8 or whatever motor that it is. Just hit me up in the comment section down below. I'll gladly answer any questions that you have about turbocharging your bike, turbo kits, my experiences. So hit me up in the comment section down below if you do. And if you are interested in purchasing a turbo kit, you can go ahead and find links in the description box below over to Trask Performance's website. You can also hit up Eric directly. I'll put a direct link to him if you're interested in reaching out to him and getting a turbo kit. You can hit him up as well and he can work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to building out your turbo kit. Of course, you can work with Nick Trask too, which is the owner. If you see him, you can hit him up as well. Anybody pretty much on the Trask Performance team can help you out in building a turbo kit and getting you turbocharged for your Harley Davidson as well. Now that's all I have for this video. Please do me a big favor. Again, if you have not yet clicked that subscribe button, click that subscribe button right now. You'd be doing me a big favor and helping me out as well as helping the community grow. I appreciate you guys so much. With that being said, make sure you're putting good energy out there into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check y'all out later. Bye now.